Now, some of you will already know this, but for those of you who don't, Apple will at times, if they deem it necessary from a form factor or design perspective, actually design their products to thermal throttle. That is to say, not run at full speed under intensive loads. We observed this with the iMac Retina 5K, and this is a fairly well-known characteristic of the MacBook 2015 Retina, which I have here in front of me. The Corsair HX1200i power supply delivers 80 plus platinum efficiency for quiet performance and Corsair Link digital advanced monitoring and control. Click now to learn more. It actually features no active cooling fans. So when we start up a stress test, you can actually see is what happens is the CPU goes to two gigahertz. So that is full on turbo mode for two cores, four threads. CPU temperatures ramp up very dramatically. So we're all the way at 74 degrees now and we're going to continue rising. Boom, 80 degrees on that CPU within a matter of seconds. And then what you're gonna see is within a couple moments here, this baby's gonna go ahead and crank all the way back down to its stock speed of about one gigahertz and the temperatures are gonna come back down to match. So there she goes. We're seeing a little bit of thermal throttling detected. Just a little spike there. 4%. Now we're at 95 degrees on the hottest core. 21% thermal throttling. Okay, there we go. So that's the behavior that we are looking for. After a short while, she'll throttle down to about 1.1 gigahertz. And then she's going to go a little bit lower, down to about 1 gigahertz, and the throttling disappears. So you can see we're no longer throttling, and temperatures drop dramatically. But next, let's have a look at a real-world load, since the IDA64 stress test is not exactly representative of a, well, real-world use case scenario. Okay, so now we're running Cinebench, and here we saw some really interesting behavior. So we were able to observe that same 2 gigahertz turbo at the beginning of our run here, if you check this out, which then slowed down to as low as 800 to 900 megahertz by the end of the run. And then what was interesting after that is that a subsequent run, so a second run, actually stayed at 800 to 900 megahertz the whole time and gave us a lower overall score, which led me to believe that if we were to cool down the MacBook 2015 Retina, maybe through water cooling means, we could actually get better performance out of it. Let's find out. So the first thing we want to establish here is a baseline for our worst case scenario temperatures for the device. We can see that the CPU is somewhere towards the back center because that's where it is actually hottest, somewhere in this territory. But since we're not going to be able to water cool the top of it, we're more concerned about knowing whether it is on the bottom or the top. And it looks like it's right about here. So we've come up with a solution, maximum 41.1 degrees. That's a good baseline. We've come up with a solution that will allow us to water cool the MacBook. Are we doing it properly? Is this something I would recommend? No. If you guys are afraid to cringe, maybe the time to tune out is now. But if you want to see us find out if improving the thermal performance of the new MacBook 2015 will help its also performance performance, then stay tuned, suckas. All right, so we're going to be using um, kneaded eraser Oh, let's hope that, yeah, that seems to be working. We're gonna be using kneaded eraser to plug up all of the ports that we don't want to damage here. Is this a good long-term solution? The answer is no. We are not planning to run the MacBook water-cooled for a very extended period of time. Just enough to run benchmarks. Is that gonna seal? I don't know, I guess we'll find out. For God's sakes. Now my camera operator pointed out that the MacBook 2015 has no fans. And I kind of went, yes, that is a good observation. Um, but more importantly, the fact that it has no fans is what's going to allow us to liquid cool it at all. Because most laptops 
And here I have a demonstration I can show you guys. Most laptops would have some kind of an intake where airflow comes in and then it cools a heating element like a heat sink inside. But because the MacBook 2015 Retina only has passive cooling from its chassis, by liquid cooling the bottom of it, we should be able to cool effectively the internals of the device as well. So for the hinge at the back, I mean, really a silicone or something would have been a much better solution for this. I know this is not ideal. Um, for the hinge at the back, we're just gonna make a snake out of our kneaded eraser and we're gonna kind of jam it in there and hope that the water doesn't, uh, doesn't get around it or anything. I mean, we're not gonna be fully submerging the notebook or anything like that. I just want to uh, give it the best possible chance of survival that it can have given what we're doing to it. So I've had a bit of a, a bit of trouble with the hinge here. I need to make sure I hold the MacBook still while not disrupting any of my other kneaded eraser. And uh, see if I can get that pretty much sealed here. Okay. So I think that's good. Now I don't want the hinge to move at all. Oh, which kind of means we're stuck with it in that position. So now we're going to build ourselves a little platform to sit this puppy on. Okay. The USB type C port is the one I'm most worried about. It's the most likely to short in the event of a problem. And it's uh, the one that I'm having the most trouble getting what I would consider to be a trustworthy seal around. Let's just go ahead and cake on more. Hoping for the best every day because we don't have another way. All right, now I can't put it down. Yuck. <laughs> oh. Blech. Oh, gross. Like, that's gross. I'll do it four times. So we're getting water out of the fridge. I'm going for the lowest temperatures that I can get on the MacBook over there. And now it's time for the pour. Oh, well, more pour. I could have told you that. Now we want a fairly good volume of water in the pan. I could have put it lower down and then we'd have been able to, we'd been able to cool the MacBook a little bit sooner. But the reason we want that is we don't want the water to heat up right away. So we want a fairly high thermal capacity for our water here. Oh, oh you can see the surface tension of the water has actually uh, let it make contact with the bottom of the MacBook now. Now we're gonna have to move fast because we're not gonna have long here, but check this out. Our memory has fallen all the way down to 28 degrees. Our CPU temperatures have fallen, although the individual cores, curiously, are still reasonably high. That's interesting. That means this thermal sensor is somewhere else. And our SSD has also dropped down to about 24 degrees. So now, and check this out. We are turboing at the maximum two gigahertz in spite of the fact that we still have a stability test running. So, let's stop that, and let's fire up Cinebench. So our CPU temps are way down now to like 32 degrees. That is much lower than our idle temperatures before we started here. This is what we're going to want to watch here. Core speed, as well as our CPU temperatures. So we're quite a ways through our test. We're still running at two gigahertz. We haven't seen this before air cooled. So it looks like that is definitely a thermal limit as opposed to a power delivery limit on the, uh, the Broadwell processor inside the MacBook 2015. Look at it go. It's not throttling at all. It's staying max turbo thanks to better cooling. Now this will tell us something about the way the chassis itself is being cooled by what we're doing. So you can see our max temperature on the top is almost 13 degrees cooler 
than our max temperature on the top of the notebook last time. So it's not just the bottom of the notebook that's being cooled, thanks to Apple's unibody design that's intended to be used as a heat spreader, that cooling is actually occurring over the entire body of the MacBook. And there we go, we have our score! Wow! Look at that! Double the score from water cooling your MacBook. Right there, suckers. So in conclusion, would I recommend water cooling the MacBook 2015 Retina? No, don't be an idiot. Would it make it perform better if we actually had like it waterproofed and then if we had like tubes going in and out, like if we had a cooling, like a water cooled cooling pad for it with like direct contact or something, would it make it perform better? The answer is a resounding yes. I'm actually blown away by how much better that performed. So I guess all that's left now is to throw a shout out to our bros over at Dbrand, Canadian company. They make vinyl skins and wraps for phones, devices like this. You may have actually noticed this one sports a carbon fiber Dbrand skin on the bottom and a kind of leather finished Dbrand skin on the top. Game consoles, all kinds of good stuff like that. They're reasonably priced and precision cut. Absolutely gorgeously beautiful. If you want to check out any more like really nice glam close-up footage of Dbrand skin on this particular MacBook 2015, then you can check out our MacBook 2015 review right around here. But guys, go check it out. They've got a link in the video description. Thanks to Dbrand for making this video possible. Thanks to you guys for making this video possible by watching it. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it just plain sucked. Leave a comment if your feelings are a little more complicated than that. And I have a feeling some of you are going to have complicated feelings about water cooling the MacBook. And as always, don't forget to also check out the link in the video description to our community forum where you can, you can join and discuss stuff. You can also buy a cool t-shirt like this one. Change your Amazon bookmarks one with our affiliate code. That kind of thing helps us out a lot. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and follow and all of that good stuff. I can't believe this worked. I can't believe it's not dead. Uh, turn it back on, see if it's... Oh, is it dead? No, oh, it's not dead. Oh, wow, the touchpad's like chilly. 17 degree touchpad, suckers. 17 degrees, suckers. Ooh.